Hi class, um, welcome to my module 10 final presentation. My name is Jasmine Lawson and I am currently in my senior year at National Lewis University. I will be graduating in March 2023 with my bachelor's in early childhood education and my endorsement in ESL. A classroom background uh, to me is the diversity present in the classroom and um, is where the students are coming from. My group of students uh, have the following classroom background. So out of 11 students in the classroom, one student is white, four students are black, and six students are Hispanic. And four out of the 11 students in the class are receiving multilingual services. And these students are flowing in from four different low income subdivisions that surround the school. Um, the school is a preschool, elementary school, and middle school, all in one building. My milestone, my milestone two project, um, I did running records on preschool age students. Um, and some of the strengths that I noticed were their, the ability to answer comprehension questions, utilize the illustrations, point out rhyming words, and handle the book itself. And the students' areas for growth were working on staying focused and being introduced to sight words. Um, sight words aren't something that are worked on in the, pre, the preschool class. Uh, so I thought that uh, introducing them would be a great way to get them on track for their early reading skills. Um, so some considerations I would make to help to implement these areas of growth. I would strive to give the students an environment where there was minimal distractions. Um, so pulling students out into a smaller room with a smaller group of students um, would keep them more focused on the book. Another great way to get students more engaged would be by providing them with a sentence tracker they can use to track the sentences as the text is being read aloud. Um, so they have something to keep their hands busy and keep them looking at the book. And the introduction of early sight words would put the students on track in developing their early reading skills. I would start by picking words that the students will see frequently, such as the words the, of, and, in, and a. According to the website cofknowledge.org, they recommend the following tips for teaching ESL students sight words. Um, so one, to make sure that the child has a good understanding of phonics before starting uh, with sight word memorization. Two, only teach a few sight words each day. Three, make sure they practice reading and writing them. And four, to have them read aloud after they have written them. So I did my milestone three project on planting. Um, I implemented this lesson in the classroom and it actually went very well. Um, so to build my students' background knowledge on planting, I asked them to fill out a the no wonder learn chart. I had them start by just filling out the no, the no and the wonder portion of the chart and to discuss this in a small group with their peers. Um, this was a great activity to do uh, so that they could just activate their background knowledge and so I could observe their conversations and hear where they're at as far as that goes. Um, so I know exactly what I need to emphasize on when it actually came to the informative teaching of planting. Um, to build student understanding, I uh, assigned them three different informative audio books on Epic Books. That, well, it's not Epic Books, but the website is called getepic.com. I decided to assign audio books because students have a better chance at comprehending text when it is read aloud. I decided to utilize Epic Books because the resource allows you to pick books in a student's native language, and it also allows you to pick books that adhere to their reading levels. Um, I'm currently using this in the summer school first grade classroom that I am teaching in, and it's going very well. So if you're not familiar with Epic Books, I definitely suggest checking it out. Um, and the final strategy that I utilized in this lesson was to build student relationships. I incorporated uh, several opportunities for students to work in groups and participate in classroom discussions. Um, for example, the students participated in a discussion about what they already knew about plans prior to the information that was presented. 
and students also worked in groups to complete an inquiry based project. Um, I decided to incorporate group work because students learn from their peers and it is always helpful in building a strong classroom community um, when you're incorporating discussions and group work because the students get to know each other and um, build relationships with one another. Uh, the most successful part of my lesson implementation was um, the inquiry-based project. Uh, so I had the students pick partners and then they got to pick a plant that they were more interested in learning about. And then they um, were able to utilize their Chromebooks, um, any articles, videos, and audiobooks that they were interested in um, to locate five plants or five facts about the plant. Um, so after that, they presented those facts in front of their peers. And this really benefited the entire class because everybody gets to learn 25 new facts about uh, the specific plants that they chose. Um, Inquiry-based uh, activities are great for students because they get control over their learning. And um, when students have control over what they're learning, they're more interested and more engaged. Um, so an example that uh, I wanted to share with you guys from a group that uh, participated in my class, um, they picked the sunflower plant and five of the facts that they found were um, they are rooted in American soil. They need sunlight. The seeds are good for you. One flower is made of a thousand smaller flowers, which I didn't know about some flowers. And the flowers is stable in art and other media. Um, so I think they were referring to the song Sunflower by Post Malone. Um, so I thought those were some really good um, facts that they located. And um, this was just really fun for the students to do. <clears throat> um, as I was implementing my lesson, I realized that I had to dif differentiate the activities as I was instructing them. Um, I'm still getting to know the students, so I'm still figuring out exactly what they need for my instruction. Um, for example, I realized that some of the students needed to complete the writing assignments in their native language, and I didn't allot time in the activities for them to translate their writing to English. Um, so if I could implement this lesson again, I would become more familiar with my students so I can implement this lesson in a way to promote the best outcome of success based on their needs. Um, so I think that becoming more familiar with the WIDA English proficiency standards will help me understand my students' readiness levels better. Um, I plan on becoming more familiar with these standards by doing my own research and, you know, becoming more familiar with them by um, reading over them and printing them out and, and referring back to them, but by also becoming uh, close and building collaborative relationship with my students ESL specialists um, so that we could be on the same page about where our students are at and what they need um, for their success. So to conclude this presentation, I just included the uh, English proficiency levels and or standards. Um, so you could see that there's six different levels, proficiency levels, starting at entering and exiting at reaching. Um, so this is very helpful and I definitely plan to print this out and um, refer to it regularly. So here are the resources I used for this presentation and thank you for watching. Good luck to you guys on your future endeavors.